Welcome everyone to Quality Sewing and Vacuums Sew so Fun presentation live today. We have been doing so many classes all throughout the Seattle area. Anne and I have been to 10 different stores and today this is our 29th class just for the month of April. So I, we're so grateful that you've joined us online here. If you get the chance and you're in the area, we'd love for you to drop into the store for a live show because at the shows you get food, fun, and friends, and prizes. Don't forget those, those are always really fun. So today we have a lot of fun notions and products and patterns for you to, to look at. Uh, do go ahead down at the bottom and leave a little comment or a like and we you will go into our prize drawing. We have two prize drawings today, so stay tuned. And if you would like to purchase any of the notions, they are 20% off with your SoFun membership today. And there will be a link connected in the comments section that you can click on and it'll take you right to the products that you can purchase. Okay, uh, for now we're going to pass it on over to Anne and take it away, she's gonna get us started. Well, welcome. Uh, we do, as Andrea said, we do have some really fun things for you today. Spring has finally sprung here in the Northwest, hopefully. So we've got some really great ideas for you starting off of this new season. But we do have some helpful notions, and I'm going to tell you about some that you'll, we'll be using during the presentation, and then I'll hand it over to Andrea, and she will tell you about some. So the first thing I wanted to tell you about is this little um, lighted seam ripper with a magnifier. And it has a little light here. You just take the cap off and then you can look through and magnify ripping a seam out. Now I know that we don't like to rip seams out. And I'm gonna ask you, how many of you know how to use a seam ripper properly? I didn't know this till about 10 years ago. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure this little uh, red ball is facing down and then you just rip it like that and you can rip it out very, very quickly. And with the light and the magnifier, if your eyes need a little extra help, um, it's really great. And then you can just put your little cap back on and you're good to go. Another really great notion, and this is just new out on the market, hasn't been out for very long. This is called the scissor holder. And when you purchase it, you have a little glue uh, pad that you put here and you can put it on the side of your sewing machine and then you never lose your scissors. I have two or three of each pair of scissors because I can only find one at a time. But this way, they're right by your machine. I had a lady as I was traveling tell me that she has been using this for the last few months on her machine. She sent it into service and it came back and it was still attached. So that is a good testimonial that uh, they do stay attached to the side of your machine. Speaking of machines, we have this cute little USB stick and we do have some designs today that you can uh, save on your USB stick. This is actually a 16 gig. The new machines are using the 16 gigs um, USBs. And this one is just a really fun little uh, addition to your sewing room. We are also going to be highlighting uh, Lana's designs from Blue Bunny Hollow. And these are, uh, there are eight different continuous line designs, or I call them uh, the, what do I call them? Edge to edge? Edge to edge, no. yes, edge to edge. Now, when you purchase this, you will you don't get anything in here. The ladies just have been asking. What, what's in here is there is a scratch off code, and you can scratch it off and go to her website and then download the designs. There are eight designs and there are uh, nine different sizes. And so that is from Blue Bunny Hollow and Miss Lana Jones. And then we also brought in the print and stick paper. 
that you can use to match up your designs and we'll be showing you this uh, as we get into our presentation. The last thing that I wanted to show you is this fantastic uh, simple folded corner ruler. And there's many different things that you can do with it, but there's a couple of things that I will be demoing uh, in just a few minutes on how to use this as a square up ruler and how to use it as a folded corner ruler, which cuts your uh, quarter inch seam allowance and it cuts the dog ears off at the same time. And then everything matches perfectly. So those are just some of the items that um, I'm highlighting. And now we're gonna let Andrea highlight hers. Okay, so over here, uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk to you about is this little, it looks like a little pen. It's actually cuticle oil. You can take the lid off and it has a little click at the end and you click it and it puts the oil into the little, um, it's like a brush tip, a paintbrush, and you just paint it into your cuticles. I don't know about you, but I have really dry cuticles in the winter time and they get snagged on my, my cloth while I'm sewing. So I like to have this right beside my sewing machine so I can soften those cuticles when they get really dry. Okay, oh, what I did wanna tell you about it is it's paraben free, mineral oil free, ethanol free, and colorant free. And it has um, the natural bergamot oils in it. So it smells really great. I'm really allergic to like everything, uh, but I can use this. It's really, really fantastic. The next thing that I wanted to tell you about is this really amazing uh, five in one tool. I use it as a seam gauge and I'll show you later on in the presentation as we're going over some of our clothing items, how I used it. But one of the really interesting features that it has is there's a little, it almost looks like a fidget spinner, but this rotates right here. And in the top right here, it has a little hole where you can put like a friction pen or a pencil and you can, when you put that in there, you can adjust your circle any way you want to and then draw a perfect circle, it's a compass. That was really a cool feature of that. I'm hoping my kids don't get into that. Uh, the next item that I wanted to tell you about are these little magic clips. The cool thing about these, I'm gonna be featuring these a little bit later, but they're flat right here. And we'll, we'll show you a little bit more why they're flat because your the foot of your sewing machine can go over it, not your needle, but your foot. On here, on the top of the magic clip, you can see I've got some little, tags. I've got the letter D. It's a sticker. We brought in these organizing stickers because in every quilting book pattern, you have to organize your cuts of your sizes of your squares. And so this is an easy way to do it. The stickers are removable. They come off. They don't leave a residue and they're reusable and they come in three different colors. Okay. So that keeps everything neat, tidy, and organized. The next thing that I um, wanted to just briefly mention is our easy precision piecing system. And I'm gonna go over these pieces way more in depth. This was an amazing system. I thought it was something else when I ordered it and I was very pleasantly surprised when it turned out to be this. So I'm gonna show you in detail how you use. This is a fabric um, relaxer and then this is fabric glue. And I'm gonna show you how to use this set later on. We also brought in this, um, this was actually an online only download design, but I contacted the manager of OESD and because we were able to order so much for so fun, he put it on a USB stick for us. Isn't that amazing? I loved this design so much. I was tickled pink that he put it on this for us. And with your so fun discount is actually cheaper to buy our USB stick and so fun than it is to download it online. Okay, so those are, oh, just a few more of these little things. We're gonna be um, talking about some crystals today. I'm gonna show you how easy and fast it is to put these little crystals on that go with our doodle flower design. Today, we have a nonstick pressing cloth that you use with the crystals. And then we also have a crystal pickup stick. It's just a, a little plastic wand with a big blob of wax on the end that makes putting those crystals on a breeze. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the time back over to Anne. Okay, and I'm gonna go over this.
and we are going to talk about one of our patterns today. We actually have two patterns that are indie patterns. And when you talk about indie patterns, these are patterns that are made by uh, independent younger designers. And they've been out on the market probably five years or so. And the one thing that I have found when, I, when you're using an indie pattern is they take traditional sewing techniques and they make them fast and easy. And so on each of our patterns today, I'm going to talk about how they've taken the technique and made it a lot easier. And so I will be uh, starting out with this is the Fira dress or jacket, or excuse me, or blouse. This one is Andrea's, and she'll be telling you about it in just a second. So you can either make a dress or you can make a blouse. And if you notice on the pattern, the dress is a little bit shorter, but I don't like my legs to show, so I added some length to it. But let's go through and talk about some of the techniques and the features of the dress. Now, I bought this pattern probably about a year and a half ago and thought I would make it up. And finally, this last summer, I used some of my really old rayons that were in my stash to make uh, the dresses that I've made. And it works out really well in a rayon or any fabric that is soft and supple. It does have a fully lined yoke. And guess what? When you fully line the yoke here, you're also hemming the top of your sleeve. So that's a really interesting technique that makes it fast and easy. There's also a nice V here in the neck. And I have interfaced this on the fashion fabric with just a soft uh, knit interfacing so that you can have a nice crisp V here. There are soft gathers here that fall down from the yoke. And there are also side pockets, but on this one, I kind of used it as my muslin, and I didn't put the pockets in, but I will show you uh, the second dress that I did that has the pockets. And then in the back, it does have um, soft gathers, and you do have a seam in the back because you have a nice walking pleat or uh opening right here. Now the reason that I really love to use this particular designer's patterns and it is from Liesl and Company because she has cup sizes and you can choose from an A cup to a D cup so it makes fitting really easy and her her design is just nice and relaxed. And so let's go to the second dress that I did. And actually, I have a jacket that matches it completely because maybe 10 years ago, I made this for so fun. And guess what? I lined it with this fabric. <laughs> so I thought, okay, is it still in my closet? And it was. It's just a, a linen jacket. And Charlotte will be showing you a pattern very similar to this next month in So Fun. It's just a nice short jacket and uh, turned out very lovely, and it just makes a great um, outfit. This one is in probably a polyester rayon, uh, and what else can I tell you? Um, it was easy to do, and I did put the pockets in. Everybody likes a dress with the pockets, and yes, I did um, add just a little bit of length here. So that is the, the dress. It works up very quickly and you can do a blouse or you can do a dress. You can do a shorter dress like she suggests. So now I'm going to turn it over to Andrea and she's going to talk about her pattern. All right. Well, one thing that I noticed when Anne and I were comparing um, our samples because we get together and we talk about how we made it and what we made it from and I noticed that that her gatherings were so much cooler and fuller looking than mine. And then she mentioned, she's <laughs> like, oh, well, Andrea, remember there's a bust, a cup size here, and mine is a size D, and mine is not. 
But <laughs> anyways, what was really pretty about the blouse is there's actually a seam down the center here. And would you grab my glue over there? <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you about the Easy Precision Piecing System glue. It's actually made for uh, quilting. I'll put this right here. But in the instructions, when I first opened up this package and I was figuring out what it was, it said to put a little drop of glue wherever you would put a pin. And so I thought, well, I don't know what this has to do with quilting, but this would be amazing in my apparel. I actually use it in all of my apparel. So if you go down to the little hemline right here, you can see I've finished my hems. I've rolled it up a quarter of an inch. And since this fabric is really loose and flowy, it did not want to press that little tiny quarter of an inch hem. You can see I've also finished the inside of that seam that goes down the back. This was a quarter of an inch. This needed a quarter of an inch. And up here on the yoke, this part also needed a quarter of an inch folded up so you could top stitch all three of these places. Well, instead of using a pin or trying to iron it and make it stay with pressing it, I put a little tiny drop of glue about an inch away, all down, about seven inches at a time or so. And one thing that I found with this glue is that you need to let it set and get tacky for about 10 seconds so it doesn't absorb into your, your fabric because it is a very soft glue, but it is fabulous. I'm going to talk about later what it is actually really used for, but it worked fantastic with, with putting a little dot all the way down the seam and then ironing it. You, I'm sorry, not ironing it, but pressing it. You just set your iron on top of it and it sets that, that quarter inch seam beautifully. And, and it was a breeze to actually fold up that last little bit of a hem and top stitch it super fast. I used it on my shirt. And I also use it on my pants in the waistline and also the hem. Okay, so I'm going to set my glue aside here. And now we're going to go on to the rose pants. I've been making apparel for over 20 years and I've read patterns, lots of different patterns. And like Anne was saying, these indie or independent um, uh, designers are really fantastic. They can be. And this happens to be a fantastic one. In this pattern, it comes in sizes extra, extra small, all the way up to women's plus size five. It comes with the option of shorts, cropped pants, or long pants. I made the long pants for me, and then Anne made the shorts for her daughter, and she'll talk about those in just a minute. But what I really loved about this pattern is the instructions. They were extremely clear, easy, and precise, and she gives you instructions on how to alter these pants. Me, personally, my body type, I've got a really long torso and super regular sized legs. So she asked you to make a muslin first, and I did. I figured since for the past six years, I've only been making superhero stretchy pants, I should probably make a muslin uh, so I could make sure that I made used my really fancy um, suiting fabric in the right way. So she said, if you don't have regular muslin fabric at home, you can use an old sheet. And I um, took one out of my closet there and I made the muslin. And I'm really glad I did because when I tried it on, it was definitely too short. These pants that I'm wearing were actually the inspiration to bring in this pants pattern because I liked these pants so much. So they were a little too short here. I needed it one inch higher. And I wanted the leg a little more fuller. It was a little tight right around my thigh area. I wanted a fuller leg. And then when I got it up to the, the hem that I wanted it, it was way too short. If I was going to hem it up at all, I definitely needed to add some length. So in the pattern, if I fold this in half, this pretty much looks like the front pattern piece right here. There's a line that goes from the crotch to the thigh right there where you can lengthen or shorten it. I cut it, I added about an inch, taped in some tissue paper. And then remember I wanted that more full leg. There's a little mark on, on the top of the pattern that as you connect those little dots right there to make your pleat, 
I just cut straight down the, the pattern to open that leg. The, pack, the back pants pattern was wider than the front pa pa pants pattern. <laughs> and so I just made the front as wide as the back. Tight, taped in that tissue paper again. And then because I did it between the pleats, I just connected those pleats, right? The, the dots to make the pant. And because it was a little bit bigger on both sides, it looked like I did it on purpose. And then I also added about three inches to the bottom of the length of the pants as well. Because when you have a nice full pant, these are my finished product. I love these pants so much. You have this beautiful flat um, waistband right in the front. So we call it business in the front and party in the back because there's elastic in the waistband. There's no zippers or buttons to, to do. So this is a really simple pattern to put together. It also has real pockets that you can fit, fit like your entire cell phone in, which is really nice. Okay, so I have that fuller pant leg here. It's a little taller, so it hits me right up at my higher waist right here. But also, Remember, I added that three extra inches down at the bottom. Look at how wide that cuff is. It's called a curtain hem because you want that, that weight. Can you see how it, it pulls the drapey pants down just like a curtain? And when you walk with them on, your pants just go swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. So anyways, that's the reason why you want that long, uh, full um, curtain hem down at the bottom. And I did it with a, a blind hem as well. Okay, I'm going to turn the time back over to Anne, and she's going to talk about her shorts that she made. These, um, this is a, the short version, but I did add some length because my daughter has really long legs, and so I think I added maybe about four inches to the length. Um, this actually is washed linen, um, if you don't like wrinkles, you don't want to use linen because linen naturally wrinkles. And the washed linen is beautiful. I did pre-shrink the fabric, and it's been traveling for the whole month, and you can see that there are little wrinkles in it, but that's, what the, that's the beauty of linen. What I wanted to do, and I hope I can do it um, up here, or Carrie, can you focus down here on the table? What I wanted to do is I wanted to explain how you do the waistband because it is a very easy way to put your waistband on. It looks very dressy from the front because it's flat. And then as uh, Andrea was saying, this is the party side. It's, it's made with two tunnels of three quarter inch elastic. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of open these up and I don't know um, if you can kind of get down here. Now, the waistband is put on in the round. And when we say in the round, it means that your whole waistband is stitched together. The side seams are stitched. And then what I did was I edged um, the top edge of this with my serger. And it's hard to see because it is navy blue. But that makes it really easy when you go to um, stitch down the front of the waistband. You don't have to worry about turning it under a quarter of an inch, and you don't have to worry about missing it. So when you put the waistband on, you're going to put it onto the pant, and it will be folded out. You're going to put it all the way around here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold the back of the waistband down. Now the front of the waistband will be kind of flipping up like this. So what you do is you fold it down and you stitch this bottom line here. It will remain open here because this waistband is going to be just kind of uh, peeking up this way. And so what you do is you sew this line and then you sew your second line and then you take a bodkin and your elastic and you go in here and you you thread that through, take a pin, make sure that it doesn't get pulled through 
when you get it to the end so that you don't have to do it again, you feed it through here, come out at this end here, and put a pin. You do the same thing with this elastic, and then all you do is you stitch down here. Remember the waistband, the front of the waistband will be facing up this way. That's how you get um, it open to thread your elastic. And then all you have to do after you stitch both uh, sides with the elastic and make sure that you overlap them the, at least a, a three-eighths of an inch. You don't want to stitch right on the edge of the elastic because with wear and tear it might pull out. So you need a little bit of a an allowance here and three-eighths of an inch to a half an inch is just fine. And then all you do is you just fold the waistband to the inside and then you just stitch in the ditch right along here and your waistband is on. And you get the beauty of the flat waistband in the front and you get the elastic in the back. And this is just really summer, uh, summer, wonderful summer clothing for you because it's easy to do. Okay, so now I think I'm going to, uh, oh, we're gonna, oops, we're gonna do a door prize. So, Andrea? I've got a door prize already. If you haven't yet, leave a comment below and um, just say, hey, this is Sue from North Dakota or wherever you're checking in from uh, because we go through those and we pick out a prize winner. Now, I want you to know, I did not pick these winners, okay, the winner for today. But I know this, it's just my friend from Fort Orchard, which is really cool. When I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, I know this. It's Annetta Retallick. Annetta, you just won a little jelly roll of our 50 Shades of Grey. So congratulations, I'll bring this to you because she lives right by me. <laughs> so anyways, how fun is that? What, I swear. Quality Sewing and Vacuum is such a, it's such a friendly, family-oriented place to be. And you just, it's just, I don't know. It's so just many fun to get to know all the customers, <laughs> it, all the ladies. It really is. You become instant friends. <laughs> yes, it's so great. Okay, I'm happy okay. to say Okay, we are going to move on. And this is our book that we are focusing on today. And it's called Table Tastic 3. And it's by Doug Lico of Antler Designs. And after looking through the book, there are actually 20 beautiful table runners, table toppers. All of them have English names. And one of the ladies asked me uh, at one of my seminars, is he English? And another lady raised her hand and said, no, I took a class from him and he is not, he does not talk with an English accent. His patterns are wonderful. And I decided that he probably is an engineer because his patterns are written a little bit differently than what we are used to, but they are wonderful and they have exactly the information that you need. So if you notice here, he just has a chart and this is how you're gonna cut your pieces. He always gives you two color uh, combinations to see what the, the uh, table runners look like. And then he follows it up with wonderful pictures of all the blocks that you're going to make. He also has a ruler that goes along with this. And I'm going to be demoing this um, at the sewing machine in just a, a couple of minutes. But this is the uh, folded corner, simple folded corner ruler. And as I told you in the, the intro, you can use it a couple of different ways. And the thing that I figured out about the book, there are basically two types of blocks that you're going to be doing. One of them will be an oversized block where you use this ruler to trim it down. The other is a precision stitched block where everything is cut precise and you don't trim it down. And so I do have a couple of examples of that. This was the first uh, runner that I did and it basically is done in three sections. 
here's a section, this is a section, and this is a section. These were, this actually was done from leftover 10 inch squares that I had. And this one is one where you will cut the block, you'll trim the block down. When I was making the legs on the stars, I had to cut them down. And so I will be uh, showing you how to do that when I get to the machine here. Um, it went together um, easily, and I love the way that it is, the blocks just seem to be, uh, they just seem to be alternated, and, and that gives a real movement. In fact, when I was walking in this morning, it just really caught my eye that it, there's a lot of movement in here. So once you get the table runner put together, the question always is, how do I quilt it? Well, we have some wonderful designs that I need to find here, right there. Thank you, Andrea. I told you about Blue Bunny Hollow Designs, and we have used three of them on our uh, table runners here today. And so remember, there are eight different designs. This one is the star design. And I was just really happy with the way it turned out. Now, as I told you before, there are nine different sizes. This is the next to the largest size. I don't have, I, I do have an embroidery machine that has the jumbo hoop, but I use my dream machine to do most of my embroidery. And so that was the second size and it goes all the way down to a four by four hoop. Um, the instructions are wonderful. Lana has a video on her website doing continuous line quilting. Um, it's basically like edge to edge and you can see that the design is rather large, but I liked it because it gives it a lot of texture and it's stitched out really, really nice. I have, I believe I have um, eight hoopings here and the entire time to stitch one hooping is two minutes. So I've got maybe 20 minutes of quilting and maybe 20 minutes of hooping or whatever. Um, I use a magnetic hoop and it goes really, really uh, quickly. And then I just put uh, a real fun coordinating fabric here on the back. So that is called Balmoral. Then we go to Lancaster over here. And this one is put together super, super fast because you have your big focus blocks here and then you have these little uh, blocks here. Now, in the pattern, he said that you need 18 10 inch squares. You don't need 18 10 inch squares. I thought, okay, what goes into 18? That is um, three. And so what I did was I chose six different fabrics and um, you just use scraps. Some of them were fat quarters, some of them were scraps because all you're doing is you're just cutting this little piece here. These focus blocks are, you know, cut larger. And then the only thing you have to remember about this, this is a precision pieced block. And the block is right is right here. So anytime, it's like a log cabin. Anytime you put one of these on, you start with the square and then you put this, then you're gonna put that and you continue up. You need to square as you go. That's the only thing that um, I can tell you that was uh, something that was very, very helpful is just square as you go. And this block is just reversed and so you do three of these, you do three of these. And then what I did, I didn't want any of the same fabrics in the block. So I had a worksheet, I printed out um, a worksheet and then I just started numbering like one, two, three, four, five, six, or five, six, four, three, two, whatever. So that I knew that I would not have any of um, the same uh, colors in each of these blocks here. And um, I have used the box uh, design from uh, Blue Bunny Hollow. And of course, it's a larger design, but you can certainly do smaller. Andrea has done a smaller design here, and she'll talk about it in just a second. 
But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you this. This is using the uh, print and stick target paper. And in Lana's video, she shows you exactly how to use this target paper. But what I did was I took and I printed it out. And you want to make sure that you print it out on the matte side, not the glossy side. Um, both Andrea and I made that mistake once. And then you peel it off. And I've stitched my design here. And right here is my matchup point. So I put the target paper on. And then I pull it back. And I sink my needle there. And then I can pull this off. It goes back on. Um, you can, let me just put it back on for you to show you. You can just keep putting it back on. If it doesn't stick after multiple times, then you can use a little bit of spray adhesive if you want to on that. So that is one of the ways of using the Target paper. But the beauty of the Target paper, I think, is when you're combining a lot of designs, and Lana covers this very, very uh, good in her video. So if you purchase this, or if you're just interested in continuous line quilting, go to bluebunnyhollow.com. And in her video section, she has a continuous line uh, quilting uh, tutorial there for you. So I'm going to turn it over to Andrea, and she's going to talk about her table runner. All right. I'll slip over here. Okay, so this was called the Portobello. You can see I've got my little printout here from inside the book. And I used all of the fabric line here at Quality Sewing and Vacuum. I didn't use just one vendor though. I went through every one of them and I chose the colors that I liked because I make I like to make things complicated, right? Um, you could have used a, like a jelly roll or fat quarters with this, um, but I just bought, you know, I just brought like a quarter of a, a yard of fabric with each one. So anyways, all of these fabrics are available here at uh, Quality Sewing and Vacuum. One thing I really liked about this, the booklet, the Tabletastic 3, is you can see that not one of the table runners are the same. Anne and I totally picked different ones and they're all different uh, shapes and sizes. And so it makes it really unique and really fun. And like Anne said, I used the, the circles. I like to call it bubbles because I think these look like summertime pinwheels, right? Um, so I used the, the circles because it reminded me of bubbles. But on the back here, these are just scraps that I had that were leftovers. And my blue actually wasn't long enough to go across the whole length of my table runner here. So I just pieced together some scraps and put them in there on the back uh, just to, to use up that my, my extra scrap. So, okay. So that's the... That's my table runner. Next, we're gonna come on over here and we're gonna talk about the turning 20. No, we're gonna do our demos. Oh, we're gonna do our demos. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. go over to the sewing machine over here. Anne's gonna show you her demo first with the simple folded roller, ruler, simple folded corner ruler. And that is the most amazing tongue twister ever. <laughs> and my faux miter binding technique for smaller projects. Yes. Everybody has just loved it. Okay. We, first of all, I told you that I was going to show you how to use this ruler right here. Let's get it facing the right direction. So if you are needing, you, you see the numbers that are across here and down here. Those are used for trimming your blocks to size. And so if I need to trim this down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of this. And let's say it's three and it's uh, six inches. So three inches would be uh, what I would put there. And let's say that I have a little bit to trim off here, then I can flip my ruler around and I can trim off that little bit there. Okay. So that we can use um, it to 
square up your blocks, whether they're rectangle or if they're square, if they fit in here. I think this goes up to about a six and a half. But I'm going to show you the beauty that I found in this ruler. So anytime you have a diagonal line here, you usually draw a line and then uh, you cut. But with this ruler, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it like this. And if you notice, there's a, a solid line here and a solid line here. This solid line, you line up right on your edge of your fabric here. If you notice this, right here is your quarter inch seam and right there is your quarter inch seam. And then all you have to do is take your cutter, cut that, and I use this on my bindings, on my borders, um, on anything. There's a lot of different blocks, and I'll show you some in just a second. But then what you do is you just flip this, and, yeah, I am, I am like, uh, I'm like, uh, okay, I got to, I got to figure I've done this so many different times. Okay, there, there we go. I'm angrily challenged like Jenny Doan. So now what I'm going to do is line this up. Can you see that I've got it lined up easily? Go to my machine. I'm going to lower my presser foot, and I am going to stitch down, making sure that I keep those edges nice and even there. And then you have a beautiful, even block. That is the beauty of cutting those dog ears off and cutting your quarter inch right all at the same time. Now, I put this together. There's lots of different blocks you can use this on. This is actually called a connector block. If I added another uh, diagonal piece here, it would be... Um, of flying geese. Here's a parallelogram where the angles all go the same way. This is a square and a square. Many of you make those. Here's a snowball block. And then in the ruler, there are all different kinds of blocks that you can uh, use this on. And he gives you a, a great uh, information on that. He also has a video on YouTube with the Fat Quarter Shop, and he shows you exactly how to use this ruler. It really is a great ruler. I have many, many rulers. I have lots of square up rulers, but I kind of fell in love with this when I was doing my runners and um, my binding and things like that. So hopefully um, you'll find it as, as nice as I have. The second demo that I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how to actually do a faux miter on your binding. And so what I've done is I've got one that I'm going to sew in just a second, but I want to show you how you start out here because it's kind of hard. I don't want to have to have you wait while I sew all the way around it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your binding and you are going to cut it on um, this is a two and a half inch binding. You can do it with a three inch binding if you want, but you cut it on a 45 degree angle and then you press it under. And then you bring it up like this and give it a, a good press. Then you're going to put it onto your project, but you're not going to sew the binding in a traditional way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over here. Oops. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew just on the single piece here. Whoops, I hit the wrong one. There, I want my needle down. If you notice here, when I fold that back, I want to stitch about an inch and a half past this fold. So I'm going to stitch to here just on the single layer. Now, I used to use this 
on my quilts because I started quilting um, over 30 years ago. And we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have all these wonderful rulers, and I bought a book called The Quilter's Visual Aid. And this was one of the techniques in it. And so I did use it on my quilts. I don't anymore. I use it on table runners, placemats, little things um, that you don't want to have to do the traditional way. So once you get that stitched, you fold this back, and then you're going to stitch all the way around just like you would normally. And I'm going to end there because I have this one stitched. The magic of television here, <laughs> or I can't say television, but um, the magic of videos. Okay, so I've got, I've gone all the way around. Let me get this back here. I've gone all the way around and mitered my corners all the way around. I didn't want to take the time to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching where I left off. And remember, I'm heading up to this fold right here. So what I'm going to do, would you hand me a pair of those scissors out of the scissor holder, please? So I'm going to continue on. Now, do you know why the machine is knocking really hard? That's because you're going through very tightly woven batik and batting. And it sounds like you need to put a new needle in, but really it's not, uh, it's not going to, you don't really have to do that. So I'm going to stop before I get to here. See where my diagonal is here? I should have used a pattern that uh, had better vision here, but here's my, my print, my pressed line. So I'm going to go and I'm going to measure up like this so that it is past, it's past this at least a half an inch or so. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut my binding. And then all I have to do is lift this up, tuck that under, and then I just stitch the rest I got to get my fingers out of the way here so they can see. Then I just continue to stitch. And then when I, before I bring it to the front or the back, I do it to the back. I take a little bit of steam seam too and put in there and stitch, uh, press it. And then I do it right here. And then all you do Sorry, all you do is bring this around and you have a beautifully mitered uh, angle right there and you don't have to worry about bringing your two edges together, getting them stitched on the diagonal. And as I say, it works really well for smaller items. And so you may want to try this. And um, I, I do have a handout that maybe I can give to you guys and you can stick it online if there's questions or whatever. So any questions about that? Okay, we will go ahead and Andrea has her demo. All right, there is another tip and trick inside the Table Tastic 3 book. And can you hand me the book really quickly? And I'll show you it inside. I am a newbie quilter. I've been quilting for one whole year as of this April. Very exciting. So I really appreciate any tips and tricks that are inside the book. And on page two inside of here, they have this little technique down at the bottom. Here he calls it the spin the seam technique. It's also called fan the seam. And I've heard someone refer to it as pop the seam. Okay. So I'm going to show you how when you do this certain technique, you'll get a perfect point in your four patch. I kept calling it four square for a while there, but now I have the right terminology down. Okay, so I've got two, four pieces of my, um, my four patch right here. I've sewn two of them together to save us some time. But the idea is to iron the seams all the same. I've got my Lara Star iron here. I love the Lara Star irons. They are the best. And I can say that because I've been making apparel for many, many years. I've used many, many irons, and this is by far superior. 
superior to any iron I've ever used. Okay, so if you have like a, a clamp or something, you'd, you'd want to, a clapper, now's the time that you'd want to, to put that down. We're just going to use my, I'm just going to use my arm right there because I'm nice and cold. <laughs> okay, so I've ironed all of my seams the same way. And you we usually do this assembly style. So you usually have like 16 of them lined up here and you would iron them all the same way. But for now, we're just going to do this one. And they're all done that same way. Then you take one and it's going to be right side up. And you take the other. And because I'm altering the light colors and the dark colors like that, you put them right side together. The trick is to do what they call nesting the seams and when you do this can you see how they just kind of sandwich right together right like that it's almost like magic we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and i'm going to sew that a quarter of an inch right over here all right get myself situated right in here make sure my in walking over here, my seam is all nice and aligned. I'm just gonna sew a quarter of an inch right here. Make sure my fabrics, not that it's super important because this is just a sample, but you know, making sure those edges are nice and lined up right there. Okay. Okay. And would you go and grab me the perfect precision set because we're going to go into more detail on what that perfect precision set is for. Okay, so here is my four patch right here. You can see I've got one seam going up, one seam going down here. This seam will need to go this way because you want them all to go in the same direction, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise as these ones are going. I'm just going to finger press that one. So this seam will need to go this way. Okay, so I know which way my little fabrics need to go here. And this is how you get pop the seam. You're going to actually gently pull apart the stitching from these two edges on the little, these little sides right here. Now I'm doing this nice and slow so you can see it, but it's way faster than, than this really looks. Okay, so once you get those popped or opened, right there and finger press those down and you know you've done it the right way when you have a teeny tiny four patch right in the center isn't that so cute it's a little tiny one so when you flip over your four patch like this you should have a really precise uh, points right there it's not as perfect as i would like it but you get the idea here <laughs> in the the sample all right, so I've just ironed these edges and can you see how poofy they are right here? And I've just finger pressed these ones and just kind of sort of ironed those down a little bit. But I wanted to talk about this easy precision, we're kind of in the shade there, um, easy precision uh, set right here. This is a pen, it comes empty and you'll open, and this is the refill right here. You open the bottom right here and you refill it like that, put the tip on, and then you pop the lid off, and under inside, it has a felt tip. Now, I've used this a million times, and I've pumped it, so, so it is definitely full of the solution, so I'm not gonna pump it, but you just press it down, and it will, the tip will fill with the fluid. Now, what this is, is it's a fiber relaxer, so it will, when you gently rub it along the, your seams here and here, and I haven't done it to these ones either. You run it along this seam and this seam as well. In the instructions, it tells you that you need to let it set for 10 seconds. And the reason why you need that is because the, it'll give the solution time to actually absorb into those little fibers. So when you come back through with your iron and press it, you don't iron it back and forth, but you just gently press it, your seams will lay incredibly flat and crisp, which I really appreciated uh, being a new quilter, especially if my edges are starting to fray or anything, they will not fray. Um, and, oh, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. 
<laughs> so that's the first set. The second part of the system is the glue right here. And like I said, when I first talked about this glue, I was like, I don't know what this has to do with quilting, but I had all my ideas of what to do with it in my apparel, right? This was actually created for quilting for like those little tiny paper pieces of uh, like English paper piecing. Or if you are a big fan of the little postage stamp quilt squares, like my mom, I'm totally going to get this for my mom. I hope you're not watching because that's a mother's day, uh, <laughs> Uh, giveaway. Um, so what you do is before you put your teeny tiny pieces together, you're going to take a little bit of your glue, put a little dot in the corners, and then place the other piece on top of it, and then press it, set it with the iron. And then when you take those teeny tiny pieces that are like the same size as your foot and put them underneath your machine, they're going to say exactly where you put them. But it, like I said, it is used for English paper piecing as well. There was a gal at one of my classes that she actually brought in one of her pieces that she made little hexagon uh, English paper piecing pieces with. And she used this uh, to put little drops in the corners and tack her um, fabric down while she hand pieced it. One thing that you want to keep in mind about this glue and um, the solution is they don't leave a crusty, hard feeling in your fabrics. Um, this will help your fabric feel nice, flat, and crisp, but it doesn't flake like starches can usually do. And this won't leave little spots. Like you saw me touching the edge of my dress, my shirt. Um, I had used it all along the edge of my my shirt, and it didn't leave little little sticky hard spots on it. And it is washable it will wash out as well after you're done using it. So that's the, 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 the precision piecing set right here. I love it and I will always use it from now on. Can I tell you how I use it? Yes, how do you use it? <laughs> I use it on pinwheels because you have eight pieces of fabric coming together and it's really nice to be able to fan your seams and then hit it with the, the nib it's it's a nice little felt nib and hit it and hit it with the iron and it presses them down i do some long arm quilting and i have found that my long arm really it will go over a heavier seam but it really likes seams to be flat and so that's where i use it okay we are going to go ahead and move on and andrea is going to tell you about uh, turning 20. All right. So Anne was so sweet. Um, she's been doing so fun for how many years now? Uh, about 29. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of the very first uh, people to do so fun. Where did I put the book? Is it over there? Uh, We're very organized today. Can you tell? No, it is not over here. I thought it was on your table. I'll run and get mine. <gasps> Had one here. Oh, it's right here. It's just underneath okay. everything. It was here all along. So this book, Anne said that she made, it was one of her very first quilts that she had ever made. And because she knows that I have five kids, I'm also the manager, I don't have a lot of time on my hands. So she said, let's bring in this super simple book. They've just reprinted it. We can get it again. Um, because it's a weekend quilt. It's something you can put together really quickly and make in a weekend. And a so day. She, a day. A day. Well, I was able to do the topper in a day, but yeah, you really can. It is so fast and so easy to do. Here is the beautiful uh, quilt that Anne made with the Turning 20 booklet here. If you look inside, there are so many different sizes, five different sizes, and she gives you the dimensions of how to make these all the different sizes inside. It's a snap to make. I know many of the gals got this so they could teach their granddaughters and their grandchildren how to quilt because it was super fast. Okay, so she brought this in so it could be something simple to put together, but I don't do anything simply. This is my turning 20 quilt because I saw so much potential in these big open squares right here. They are beautiful big open squares, 
we brought in our doodle flower design and our edge to edge design. And I thought I can combine this all together, right? So I made the quilt first and then I added in all of these doodle flower designs. Then I did the edge to edge design. So I've made this whole entire quilt, right? With all of my fun, fancy fabrics from my, my scrap pile. Um, and then I traced out the pattern pieces and I cut my quilt apart because apparently it's all the rage to make these cool quilted jackets, right? And I figured if I'm going to cut apart a quilt, I might as well do one that was really easy to put together and not a super complicated one, right? So that's what I did with this. And my mom, thank you, mom. My mom has always taught me that when you make a garment of any sort, you want the inside to look as nice as the outside. So you can see all the quilting that I did in the whole quilt. And because I quilted it and cut it after it was already quilted, I did what is called a Hong Kong seam along the edges where you wrap the seam and you stitch it down so there's no raw edges in there. And then I did a couple of, uh, this is not what the pattern is supposed to look like, but I made it up as I went. So let me show you the back as well. I've got this doodle flower design here. It has one, two, three little appliques on it. And then I've added the jewels to it as well because that's, it's called the doodle flower glitz, right? I've also got a doodle flower right here as well. And I'll um, switch this over right here. And here is another doodle flower. This was my first doodle flower that I did. And there is something important that I learned in the process of um, embroidery. Uh, you want to put a topper on your fluffy fabrics. This is wool right here. And you can see that my stitching just kind of sunk right into my, my fabric there. But I figured if I covered it with enough glittery crystals that it would totally look fine, right? <laughs> Okay, so from then on, the other ones that I did on the front, I used the OESD Heat and Gone uh, topper because I was using these fine fabrics. I didn't want to deal with any of the water. Okay, so that was our, our Turning 20 book. It's simple, easy, you can do it in a day or a weekend. All right, where are we going from here? After the doodle. Oh, we were talking about the doodle flower. Okay. Yep. Um, so while we we're on the subject of the doodle flower, I wanted to show you how simple and easy it is to put these crystals on. I'm going to take my jacket off and bring it over here. We're going to add a couple crystals to my little flower that's on the front. Get it down nice and flat here. Okay, I think we should add some crystals to this leaf right here. I've got them on this leaf and this leaf and the inside of here. Um, so I'm gonna add some to this little leaf right here. And here are our, they are hot fix crystals and these are just the clear ones. I'm gonna open this up and it comes with a little card inside and I'm just gonna use this card to put these crystals on. Now don't be deceived, this may be a little tiny package but there's a lot of crystals in there, right? Okay. I'm gonna open this up, pour a couple of crystals on there. One of them came off. Because whatever you iron these onto, they're gonna stay there, right? All right, stick that in there. And then I'm gonna grab my uh, hot, no, it's a crystal stick with the wax end right there. And it has this little pointy end. So I'm going to separate the crystals that are flipped over from the ones that are upside down because the ones that are upside down have glue on them. Okay, so I'm just gonna gently touch a crystal and because it's wax, it just picks it up right away. I'm gonna take it over here and stand over here. I'll just touch it down right here. There we go, there's a crystal. And here's a crystal. Here's a crystal. We're just going to 
put it right there. That looks good. The fun part about this is it has all these like little loops and circles and little places where you can add in your jewels wherever you want to. So that looks pretty good to me. You can actually put on 20, 30, 40 of these crystals all at one time, whatever will fit underneath your iron. You can heat them all and glue them on all at the same time. But just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna do those four there. I'm gonna set this down. And then because I've used my little, my little card right here, I'm just gonna tap all those to go right in the middle. And then they'll all slide right back into my little bag. Andrea, can you wash the coat with the crystals attached? Um, I have. I don't. I don't think I'm going to wash my coat only because it has velvet, raw silk, satins, tapestry. So it's a really fine fabric. I will dry clean this jacket, but I will tell you about Anne's shirt. Anne put the crystals all over her shirt right here she used the doodle flower design as well without the applique and she what did you call it grandma dust grandma sparkles <laughs> crystal dust fairy dust fairy dust is all these little sparkles that she put all over here and she's actually washed this t-shirt that she got at costco two times with the crystals on it and the crystals have stayed isn't that awesome so i probably won't wash my coat necessarily, but they do wash on uh, um, clothing really well. And if you're concerned about them coming off, you can turn your shirt inside mm -hmm. out so they won't get banged yeah. on and everything inside your washing machine. But they do stay, which is really awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take this. This is called our non-stick pressing cloth. Not really sure why it's called cloth because it's just a really cool sheet of non-sticky plastic. And I'm going to lay this down right over the top of my crystals. I give it about 20 seconds here. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And you lift off. And then I take this off, set it aside. I fluff my fabric just to make sure that the glue is cooled down enough and the crystals are on there, just like that. Um, am I gonna talk about the wash away applique too, real quick? Yeah. Okay, so another part of the doodle flower design is the wash away applique uh, that we brought in. So you can stick on your, I'll come right back over here. I'll come over to the iron, how about that? that seemed like an okay place here's the doodle flower i'm going to set that aside so the wash away applique container looks like this Ta -da! and it's an eight and a half by 11. so just like the print and stick paper you can put this in your printer and print out the shapes of the applique from our doodle flower design and we've got the shapes right here printed out on some of that wash away applique Okay, so here I have my sheet that's cut out. The front kind of feels like really stiff toilet paper because it's just pressed down fibers, right? And they need to be able to be washed away. The back part is shiny with the glue on it and you wanna make sure that you print it out the right way too. Okay, so because you want this to go down onto your, your apparel piece, um, the sticky side needs to go down because they're, they are directional. These little pieces are directional. So they will go right down onto where the, your, your compute, your printer, your sewing machine will print out a little, um, trace a little line around the edge of where you will need to put down your little applique. But how do you get the fabric to stick on top of that? Well, I went through many different ways to do it, and this is the best way that I found to do it. So I have my little fabric here. On the back, I put the steam -a seam which comes in a roll, and I just cut a little piece to the size of my fabric. You can also use fusible web on the back too, and that's what I had at home, and that's what I used at home, but the steam -a seam will work as well. 
So then you have to layer the sticky on sticky, right? So that is when our non-stick pressing sheet comes back into play. So on my ironing board, I made a little sandwich like this. So I had the sticky or the non-sticky down and then my fusible piece and then my fabric that has the fusible on it. Put this down because I don't want the sticky on my ironing board or my iron. I set my iron down there. I fuse them together and then you let it cool. Make sure it's nice and cool. And then you can just peel it right off of there and you can see the shape right through your fusible, um, your wash away applique, trim it out. And then your little applique pieces turn out like this. This was a little sweatshirt that I made for my daughter. And this is the technique that I used to make the little butterfly wings on her butterfly. You can see all of her beautiful little, the little um, crystals on there. So we have the crystals in the pastel colors and we also have the crystals in clear. So you can do either colors or crystals. All right, that's the end of our doodle flower design. Okay, I, I do have the t-shirt that I did. Um, and I, I just need to tell you about stabilizing because this is a line design. It's just a continuous line, uh, well, an outline. Um, all I did was I put my t-shirt on a tearaway sticky back stabilizer and it was fine. So I decided to make a pillow. But what I wanted to show you is how to do a hidden zipper here. And I know that Donna, one of our um, consultants, uses uh, hidden zippers a lot. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to try that because I hadn't used them before. So I'm not going to go ahead and stitch but I'm going to just basically, because we're kind of running late on time, but I basically wanted to just show you how you uh, make the, the flap for the hidden zipper. These are dress weight zippers, the number three zippers, and you want them to extend into the uh, side seams of your pillow because you can stitch over these very, very easily. So if you notice here, maybe I can put it down on the table and that will be easier. What I've done is I've stitched my zipper on this side, I've stitched it on this side, then I top stitch it. This is the bottom side, this is the top side. The top side, I did uh, do a, a top stitch there. I didn't on the top side because what I did was I cut my top flap here three inches longer than my uh, bottom and then all you do is you just pinch this up like this fold it over and then I put a couple of pins in it flip it over and I top stitch right along this line here this is the line that the side that I did the, the top stitching on. And then this will have another line of stitching because I will stitch right along that. You can see that this is a little bit, it will be a little bit wider. It's about an inch and a fourth. This one is an inch and it's finished off like that. There's really not any dimension that you have to worry about. You just have to make sure that you cover your zipper and that, that's all there is to putting a hidden zipper in the back of a pillow. Okay, um, what we're going to do now is we're gonna talk about the fold and go folio. And this was a really fun uh, project to make because you can make it out of fat quarters, you can make it out of your uh, orphan quilt blocks. We have quite a few samples here. The one thing that you need to know about this is you need to know that you have to add your seam allowance. And inside the pattern, there she gives you all of the uh, measurements and all the, the pattern pieces that you need. And you can make these for jewelry. You can make them for um, sewing. And so we've got some samples here. This is a small one that uh, Andrea made. And it does have the little doodle flower with the, the little jewels. 
and you open it up and she has a pair of scissors here and she has her clips here. Now, something that she taught me, I always learn when I do so fun, I learn so much from you ladies. Um, I also learn from the consultants and what Andrea has done here and I think it's a great idea. I wish that I, I'll bring it back up. Just let me untie this. Um, how many of you have ever made something with a little pocket for your scissors and then they keep falling out? If you just stitch a little bit of ribbon here, you can put them through the little uh, finger holes here and tie them in and it works great. This one, I haven't decided what I wanted to do with it. I did reduce the pattern down because this was a block a pass around block that I made uh, many years ago on a quilt. And so I used my decorative stitches at that time and I thought I'll just make it into one of these. These little pockets are really easy to add. Here's another block that I did many years ago. It was an eight inch block and I cut it down. I put it on my computer and reduced it down so it would fit on the embroidered block. And I made a jewelry pouch where you have the little um, little bars here that you can put your necklaces, you can put your rings here, you can put your jewelry here. And then I did, this is the normal size, I did a sewing one and I used the technique that Andrea taught me about. There's three little pouches here that you can put whatever you want. And then here's a place for your needles, here's your thread. So it just makes a really fun uh, little pouch. Do you want to tell them about your Wonder Woman? Uh, I can. Okay. <laughs> it is. Phenomenal. I might have had a really fun time making this one. It was really fun. Okay. So I have a lot of fun um, Wonder Woman fabric right here. I fussy cut, well, actually, I put some fusible web on the pieces that I wanted to cut out. And then I fussy cut them and ironed them onto here. And then I just did a little straight stitch around all the edges of here. And then I put our crystals. Look, she's got crystal earrings. They were like the perfect size. And then I added crystals all along the edges. And somebody asked me if I was making this for my daughter. And I was like, uh, no, it's for me. <laughs> so anyways, inside Anne made her little loops right here. But I had some perfectly matching ribbon some grow grain ribbon and so i just put that in there to put my wrap my necklace around there i added two little pouches and this one was just the right size for one of those little travel size sewing kits and then on the ring or the earring part i put two flaps so we could put lots of different earrings inside and my husband's boot near little pin um, for when we go ballroom dancing together so anyways when you stitch those sides they want to just fold right up like you made them. Like that. Okay. We have one more thing to do, and Andrea is going to show you the USB cases. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of USB things kind of going on here. So we brought in this little tiny case. It's a cute little pattern. I actually used up scraps from my table runner to make mine. Here is the hanging one. And you can see that I'm still working on my collection of USB sticks. And our big uh, magic clips fit in there really great just for you to see that those were all little pockets right there. And I put a really big grommet at the top so I can hang it on a, a little hook in my sewing room and, and start my collection, right? Well, Anne, she too was really smart. How she put hers on, she glued her button on there and put Velcro. So it was really easy to open up her travel um, USB holder right there. And I put a real button in mine. So hold on. Ta-da! <laughs> I, I suggest using the Velcro. It's way faster and yet the same idea. And again, I put my clips in there for you to see that those are little pockets right there. Okay, so I have a little tip. Inside of the little instruction pattern right here, there's only one little template to get this the curved top of your little holder right here. So if you have your piece of rectangle fabric like this, I took my little crafting knife and I just trimmed along the edge and cut it out. And I folded the top of the paper down. That way you can just put it on your, your fabric right here, trace the template, 
And then when you're done with it, you can fold it back up because there's instructions on the side and store away your little template without ruining your instructions. So thank you, my, my other um, spot of brilliance in this whole fun uh, class this week. So okay. we do have one more door prize. And it goes to Linda Hooper. This is an embroidery takeout from OESD. And so, Linda, if you would uh, contact us uh, via message, Facebook message, and we will get this to you. So mm -hmm. um, if you could put down uh, a, either an email or a phone number where we could reach you and also the best store where you could pick that up, that would be really great. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot because we certainly learned a lot. And we will see you very soon. One more thing to keep in mind is the 20% off SoFun discount will last from today until next Thursday, which is May 4th. Yeah. <laughs> it's May 4th. So you can enjoy your 20% discount all the way for a whole week. And we will see you again in May. Have a good day.